I hope everyone was warned that uh, my Norwegian is uh, non-existent, that I do not speak um, any Norwegian. In fact, I'm still struggling through trying to learn German after five or six years um, focusing on that. Uh, how many of you feel like I, I can hear and I can understand what he's saying and we're in good shape? Okay, good. Because if only one hand came up, I would, uh, <laughs> not quite sure what we would do at that point. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Robert Schramm. I'm a board certified behavior analyst. Um, I started out as a special education teacher. I got my master's degree in special education and spent my time really focusing on trying to become the best teacher that I could be for the kids that I was seeing um, in my classroom. Um, and uh, I found that having gotten a master's degree allowed me to have a lot of tools and tricks in, uh, in my back pocket that I could use to help work with the children in my classrooms. Um, and I found that we were able to make a lot of really nice progress uh, with a lot of the kids that we were working with. But there was one population that I always found myself thinking, you know, I'm just not reaching these kids to the potential I think that they have. And these were the children that were diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. These were kids that um, showed incredible levels of intelligence in certain areas or in certain abilities, yet I was not able to really capture those interests or be able to um, get the child to stay connected with me long enough to really teach the things that I wanted to teach the child. Um, and in, in an attempt to try to be a better teacher, I started to study all of the the types of um, education practices that were out there for children with autism. Um, I started taking seminars and things like uh, PECS, the Picture Exchange Communication System. How many of you are familiar with PECS? Okay, good. That's a, it's a system of teaching um, people to communicate their wants and their needs through picture signs instead of words. Um, and I found that it was useful for a lot of our nonverbal kids, the ability to then ask for things that they wanted was able to cut down so many of the inappropriate behaviors that they were using. Most inappropriate behaviors, in fact, um, people are saying about 70% of the, the inappropriate behaviors that you see come from the fact that a child cannot communicate their specific basic wants and their needs. Um, and PECS helped us to do that. Um, I also started to study um, floor time, which was a, a, a green span approach of really getting down to the level of the child and working at a play level with the child and letting your play lead you through the learning process. I felt that that benefited us to some degree. Um, I learned about the TEACH program, which is, um, are anybody familiar with the TEACH concept? Okay, um, not quite as many, but still quite a few, good. Um, TEACH is a, is a program of using visual schedules and visual models to help the child know what the expectations are going to be and to follow certain routines um, day by day so that the child knows what the expectations are and start to meet those expectations. Um, and then you use that, that, um, that kind of scheduled programming to help you to get instructional control and to be able to teach. Um, let's see, what else? We've learned sign language, um, which to some degree is pretty much the same thing as PECS. Um, the PECS system is meant to teach children how to communicate when they cannot communicate verbally. Sign language is meant to do the exact same thing. Um, when learning to do sign language and learning the ease at which we can do this, um, I stopped using PECS myself, except for rare instances where uh, for a specific child it made sense. Um, but I tend to, when teaching initial um, um, question asking to a child, I use sign language as opposed to PECS in most cases. Um, but I started putting all these things together and I found that I was getting all of these different tools, you know, like I had the, the pex saw and the, um, the teach hammer um, and the sign language, uh, what, other, what other tools are the wrench. Um, and when I was meeting the kids that I was working with, they were coming into my classroom, I was trying to pull these tools out and, and, and use them. But the problem was is, is I really didn't have any real understanding of what I was doing in the big picture. You know, it's like, okay, this kid doesn't communicate, so let's throw pecs at him and let's see what happens. Or let's try some sign language and see what happens. Um, I, I have since learned that just the basic PECS and sign language, the way that we were doing it, was not even really optimal for its use. And we now have a more 
uh, I think a more complete and more appropriate way to use text or sign language. Um, we had visual schedules. We put our kids through the system where they had their stations. And they worked, worked from left to right. And yeah, the kids learned what they were supposed to do. Um, but it didn't affect their motivation in any way. It didn't really get them um, intrigued or interested. And it, it took the teaching away from me, the teacher, and put it in the hands of the materials. Um, to some degree, Teach works really well to help teachers to organize their classroom because everything is set up and organized and it makes it easy and kids know what to do and it's a little easier for the, for the teacher. But I think ultimately it doesn't teach the child um, to, the, to the level that the child is going to need to be more successful in life. We want children to understand that um, I am the teacher in this situation and that coming to me, learning from me, makes your life better. The things that I can teach you are going to be things you can use to get the things that you want, to have friends, to, to do the kind of things that you may not, at this point, understand how to do. And I didn't really feel that I was able to do that with teach. I was, I was basically putting schedules around, uh, uh, schedules and uh, visual prompts around the child and then using that to guide the child as opposed to really teaching the child how to want to learn from me. Ultimately, I began working with a, a child that was very difficult for us, and he was in a regular education classroom, and uh, a behavior analyst was called in to help because we were not having any success. And this behavior analyst came in and started to introduce to me the basic concepts of applied behavior analysis. Um, how many of you are familiar with applied behavior analysis, ABA? Wow, I really thought that I'd have more hands up here than that. Um, uh, applied behavior analysis is the is the is a scientific approach to teaching. Um, not a scientific approach to teaching children with autism, but a scientific approach to understanding why we do the things that we do. Why is it that sitting in the seat, right, that you guys are all sitting in the seat, some of you are making more eye contact with me than others, some of you are sitting up straight, some of you are more slouched down, um, some of you are resting your, hand, your heads on your hands right now, and some of you are not. Why are you making those individual choices? Some of you have phones that are ringing. <laughs> some of you do not. Go ahead. Uh, uh, why, why do you make those individual choices? What is it in the environment at any given time that causes you to decide to do those things? And what is it in your past history that has taught you that doing those things are going to be helpful to you? And that's why you do them more. That's what the science of behaviorism is all about. It's about understanding why people do what they do. And then using that understanding to help kids or people with needs to overcome those needs. That's all applied behavior analysis is. There are some basic principles behind applied behavior analysis. These are things that have been studied and have been shown to, to be factual. They work over and over and over again. There's a thing called reinforcement. Um, some of you may have heard reinforcement and may not have a full understanding of what reinforcement is scientifically. But reinforcement basically states that anything that happens after a behavior choice that causes you to use that behavior more often in the future is a reinforcer for that behavior. Does that make sense? So anything that I do that gives me something that I want, well that thing that I want is a reinforcer. <coughs> because it causes that behavior to happen more often. Uh, an example, um, I, have a, I have a little baby girl, she's uh, 19 months old right now. When she, when she was first born, um, she basically didn't do much more than this. That's all she had, that's the only skill she had. She could make noises, ah, 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 she could cry, and she could wave her arms like this. She wasn't, you know, doing this, she wasn't doing jumping jacks, she wasn't walking, she wasn't even rolling over. Very limited skills. Um, at some point during the process, um, I noticed that she had learned that if she had an itch on her nose, that by rubbing her nose against my shoulder or against my chest would make that itch go away. 